live video has started and um, I'm waiting for Maya to join me. And it's good to see everybody again. That's my dog, Cristiano Ronaldo. He's unruly. Hi, 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 everybody. View request. Um, this is so fun and kind of scary and nerve wracking at the same time. Like nothing like being loud or live. Um, hi, Jonathan. Oh my gosh, hi. This is so sweet. Oh my, here we go. Is gonna join any second. Hi, I love it when you guys call me Queen C. Hey. Hi. How are you? Nice. I like the sweater. I love it. <laughs> so good. Um, amazing. I love that so much. Um, you guys, this is phenomenal because um, the whole purpose of doing this uh, Streamly Live session was to ultimately donate all of my proceeds to the Ronan Thompson Foundation. And Maya Thompson, who is here with us right now, is the founder of the, Maya, of the Ronan Thompson Foundation. And I just thought it would be really sweet for you to be able to meet her, see the face behind the organization, and let her tell you a little bit about um, how it came to be and all the fabulous people that have um, come along on her journey to support the foundation some very fancy people <laughs> um, like, like Taylor Swift um, well, I'm thinking Taylor Swift <laughs> but I'm not fancy but I I'm just it's my supreme honor to do whatever I can to continue to keep his legacy alive to keep supporting the work that you do Maya because pediatric cancer research is the least funded um, research um, cancer research by our government which I feel like just sends the wrong message about kids and how we feel about our future going forward and maybe you want to um, talk to that a little bit sure it's can I say, I can say fuck on here. It's super fucked up that <laughs> you say whatever you want. It is, it's childhood cancer is the number one disease killer of kids and the least underfunded by the government. And I unfortunately found that out because my son Ronan was diagnosed with neuroblastoma, which is a form of childhood cancer in 2010 when he was three years old. We had no warning signs, no symptoms, and one day his left eye started to look a little bit droopy so we took him into the pediatrician she thought it was simply just a sty in his eyelid and that ended up not being the case uh so he was diagnosed with stage four neuroblastoma which is one of the deadliest forms of childhood cancer and there's usually not any warning signs or symptoms so uh he passed away nine months later and I'm just left here on this earth for a few reasons but one of them being that I'm going to fight for all of the kids and that are dealing with just this awful awful disease. I remember when um, you told me about um, Ronan's diagnosis I was um, doing expendables I was actually in Las Vegas it was uh, August 2010 and I was there at Planet Hollywood doing the premiere of Expendables 1 and I'm in the makeup chair and I get a call from you and you're like can you talk and I said well yeah and I don't know you to ever like say such a thing so I knew it was like extraordinarily important that I talk to you and I'm trying to get my makeup done and go onto the red carpet for Expendables 1 and you're telling me this horrible story this diagnosis which is basically anybody under like the age of three I, I believe that it's just pretty much a death sentence and you're just giving me facts and you're so composed and your voice is so soft and you know I, I think I would have been a stark raving mad woman I, I, I don't even know how you were able to get through that conversation and I was really uh, aghast at what I was hearing and I was just you know trying to not cry while she's doing my makeup and I had to go out onto this you know red carpet and pretend like everything is okay that my best friend just didn't tell me that her 
her baby was just diagnosed with a deadly disease. So needless to say, this foundation is very close to my heart. And I try at every opportunity once or twice a year to fundraise and bring awareness. And I just thought this was like one more opportunity because um, September is Pediatric Ca Cancer Awareness Month. Although I, I had intended to do this signing then. And thank you all to the fans who have been so patient with me to get through this. Um, I know that you were expecting me to do this a couple of times and I had to reschedule and my mom passed away. But um, now I'm home, I'm settled, I'm getting ready um, to get back to business. And, and um, it's just my pleasure to, to be able to do this and support Maya and the foundation and, uh, and the cause in general. Bring awareness to you guys. And please thank you for your donations. All of my signatures. So if you bought a photo to be signed for me today, um, every single photo that I would get um, paid for is going straight to the Ronan Thompson Foundation. It is a nonprofit. Um, all of the donations go straight to research and supporting families that are going through this terrible time. Can you, can you, Mike, can you describe like what kind of, what the research is and like what kind of support the families get? Sure. I mean, so I'm the Ronan Thompson Foundation is a nonprofit and I'm very lucky to run an organization where we have no overhead, which means I can give 100% of the proceeds to whichever doctor or hospital we are supporting, which I'm so thankful for my board members that work pro bono. I don't have to pay staff. And that's really important to me because I don't want a big overhead of having, you know, you guys donate your money and then I've got to pay like a staff member. I want to be able right directly to the hospitals and the doctors and we're really picky about where we give our money to so i've honed in on really um three places one is sloan kettering in new york city children's hospital of philadelphia and then there's a doctor out there named dr giselle giselle Scholler, and she's kind of like my rock star in all of this so those are the three places where we typically give our money to and go solely towards research. So we really take the time to look into what research they are doing and make sure that it's the right fit for our foundation. Yeah. And great That's to be amazing. able to support the doctors and hospitals that I believe are going to be the, the ones that change the face of this disease. Yes, I, I love that. And you would know because you were in the throes of it and vetting, had going through how many doctors did you go through, how many yeah. planes did you have to get on and how many different com companies and, and hospitals did you deal with and and also just you know a lot of times when kids get cancer or, or people get cancer there's a lot of like well if we can't help you we don't if we can't if, if we can't find a cure you're not likely to be cured we don't want you to participate in our study because we don't want that negative um yeah. uh, feedback on our our study so like it's also kind of shady it's not shady but it's just a reality of studies where there just has to be a great fit you have to have like a great a great prognosis it has to be a certain kind of um, patient to participate in certain studies to get the results that they want so they can continue to get more financing so yeah. childhood research is and it's just necessary. Our government does not do its best. They don't um, fund us the most. Like, what is the breakdown on that, Maya? Um, I mean, every day, so there's like 47 kids that are diagnosed and there's not been any new drugs developed in the past 30 years. So, I mean, we've had, we've had great strides with leukemia. Leukemia is yeah. 98% curative now, which is amazing, but I really think we need to be focusing on these other childhood cancers that are not getting any funding. Yeah. And, you know, another thing about childhood cancer is you do get all these survivors, which is what you want, but the long-term survivors of this end up having just major, major issues, like lifelong issues, because the treatments for childhood cancer are so toxic, which is another issue that nobody, nobody ever talks about. Right, so you survived the disease, but then you have all of these side effects later on in life, making it difficult to um, live, you know, happy, joyous, and free. Well, um, with all of that in mind, I hope that you guys enjoy um, hanging out with us as I sign autographs. That'll benefit the Ronan Thompson Foundation. And to start with, I don't know if you're in the chat right now, but Antonio, 
you're up first. And I, I noticed that in some of the signings, and Maya, if you watch the um, comments, if there's like questions that come up that I miss because I'm looking down or talking, let me know. Yeah. Um, but uh, Antonio, I don't know if you want me to say to Antonio or just sign my name. That's always one of the hardest parts, but I usually default to writing the name of the person. So Antonio, here we go. You can, I'm gonna try to like, ah, I don't think I can torque it enough, but let's see. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Um, if I can get it lower. This is a, oh, I don't think I can make it lower. You're just gonna have to try that it's me signing it. Okay, Antonio, this is for you. Maya, can you talk about the song Taylor wrote for your son? I would love to. That is my <laughs> favorite subject <laughs> and topic and one of my favorite things to talk about. Yes, so when Ronan was sick in 2010, I started a blog uh, before blogs were even really a thing. I didn't, I didn't intend on it to go anywhere. I was just simply going crazy in a hospital with at night with nothing to do and I had nowhere to place my pain or my anger or my sadness so I just simply started writing and one of the people reading my blog was Taylor Swift I had no idea at the time and I didn't find out until after Ronan passed away and she reached out to me she was coming to Arizona for a concert and she had asked to meet me so I went to the concert met her she gave me the most beautiful night off from my pain I was so grateful walked away from that night just being like that was one of the best my nights of my life she is so lovely and gracious and kind and walked away from that night being so thankful and then about a year later she contacted me again and told me that she had taken the words from my blog and written a song called Ronan and she wanted to know if she could make me co-writer with her which is bananas of course I said yes and then all the proceeds went back to different childhood cancer foundations, Ronan being one of them. And it's just been a dream, a dream. Were all the uh, proceeds that you got that did they all go into the Ronan Thompson Foundation yeah. from the song? And yeah. then her half went to other? Yeah, went to another one. And then she just re-released the song, uh, it was a year ago yesterday because she's having to re-record all of her old music. And so she was never able to put Ronan on an album of hers. It was just simply a charity single. And so she reached out to me about a year and a half ago saying that she was rewriting all of her old songs and she would love to put Ronan on her red album because that was her album of heartbreak and pain and grief and that she wrote Ronan around the time that she was writing her red album. So it's now on a little Taylor Swift album. That's amazing. I do want to interrupt one second and let Osama know, give Osama a shout out. I don't know if you're present today, but you bought like, I don't know, like 10 photos. And this is just so wonderful of you to do because all of it is going to the Rona Thompson Foundation. So Osama, you are my new favorite client. <laughs> and thank you so, so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. $142 so far. I know. This is amazing. So how? What? Well, I can't hear you cut out. Are you doing a live? No. Um, okay. Why aren't they on here? Uh, I don't know. It's, it's my stepdad. Hey, um, Rachel, Rachel, my friend. It's you. This is for you. Thank you. She's such a big supporter of mine and is happy to participate in the Ronan Thompson Foundation benefit um, today. Um, how did we meet? How did we meet? Yeah. One of my other favorite stories <laughs> was it was in 2006. Was that right? Was that late? I feel like Donovan was two. It might have been 05 or 06. I was doing Veronica Mars. 2005. 2005. We met in La Jolla, California. I was there for the summer with my two boys, Liam and Quinn. And 
we were staying and it was, I always say it was like a Melrose place type of a situation. Like it was. A complex. And our it's doors were of... across from each other. And I walked out one day and you were out there with Donovan, who is just a few months older than my babies. And we just started talking. And I didn't know who you were. I just thought you were like just the sweetest, kindest, beautiful woman. And Aww. we just clicked right away. We just got down to basics, talk babies. And here yeah. we are. How many, uh, like all these years later, I can't do math. What's 22 minus six or five? A lot of years. Um, yeah. But what's so great about us, I think, is just that when one of the things that you'd said recently is just that our friendship has just blossomed over the years. Like it's just gotten closer and tighter. And I think we've both been able to do a better job of, of keeping in touch, or at least on my part, because I don't know, when you're working on sets all the time, it's really hard to maintain relationships. I mean, it's divorce <laughs> um, twice. And, um, you know, just friendships, it's very hard. You're tired a lot, even if you're not working, it's just very hard. And you were so great at just keeping in touch and being um, like a solid friend that just never judged me and never felt like butt hurt or, or did any of the things that made, guilted me or made me feel bad or any of that. So thank you for that. Oh my gosh, look, $427 just in a few minutes that we've been doing this. It's easy to play that role to you because you're one of my most favorite human beings in the world. Like, and I, feel, I mean, I feel so lucky to have you in my life. Are you kidding me? But I, I do love how much our friendship has evolved. Me too. And I love like getting to know more about you in the sense like what a rebel rouser you are. And just how we really do speak our minds and we amplify that in one another. There's just no, like we stand up for what we believe in. And, you know, just so you guys know, Maya has a daughter. You should follow her on Instagram, by the way, Mama Maya. And, um, and then follow the Ronan Thompson Foundation as well. So it's a Ronan Foundation um, on all the social medias. But it's kind of fun to watch you raise Poppy to just be this mindful you know, no holds bar, no overly polite, no, you don't have to kiss your uncle because he wants to. And, you know, you just do your best to just sort of help her honor her own boundaries and speak her mind. And I just love that. I love that. I'm living through your motherhood with your little girl okay. just because I don't have any. I mean, I, I, I never thought I was going to have a little girl. Ronan always wanted a little sister that he begged me for a little sister when he was sick. And I just kept saying that, you know, okay, Ronan, after you get better, like maybe we'll, we'll have another baby. But the fact that I had her and it was a her, and I'm just, I'm so fucking psyched to be raising a little girl in this, this like new generation of, I feel like women were raising. Yes. These strong, empowered women that know how to set boundaries, know how to say no. It's, I mean, it's my, one of my favorite things to do in life and I'm very grateful. And I love having you on that journey with me and being one of her aunties and somebody that she loves watching and knowing what Aww. you do. I love it. I'm trying to give waves back to everybody that's showing up. Thank you so much for being here. Um, Rola, thank you. I hope you like your photo. I've signed a bunch, Nicole Jones. Um, I signed one for Carlos. One of the Entertainment Weekly photos. Just keeping the train going. Um, let me see if there's any questions. Hi, wave, waving. Um, do you guys have any questions about Buffy or Angel or anything that you want to ask? You know, I never brought you to set. We never did a set visit with you, did we? Did you come to Veronica Mars set? Me? Yeah. No, I've never been to one of your set visits. Oh, that's crazy. Um, of all of the shows that I've done, which one would you want to be a part of? Any of them? Any of them? Any of them? Uh, um, that Broadway play that I know someday you're going to perform on? <laughs> yes. Oh I'm my God. From your lips to God's ears. Uh, in New York on a Broadway, in a Broadway play. I don't know if Jonathan is still present, but Jonathan, let's do a Broadway play, play together. Please. I need but I can't to... sing, so it can't be a musical. Charisma, <laughs> how did you do Ron? Oh, I love Veronica Mars. Which role would you like to reprise? I don't know. Do yes, I do talk to Sarah. 
You were an absolute favorite on Angel, Shark, Shocking Heartbreak. Oh gosh, they're going so fast. Thank you guys for being you. As a woman who is currently in cinema studying, a student seeing Speak Your Mind as you do, helping me be more supportive in this industry, good for you. What's your favorite part of being on Buffy and Angel and did you like one more than, I liked doing Angel more just because there was more to do for Cordelia. Um, what did you think of Angel's investigations is up to now? I don't know, probably defeating evil. Um, all right, I'm gonna keep signing. I have, this is for Car Caroline. So I'm gonna sign this for her. What is your favorite show to watch on TV right now? Are you, what do you think of White Lotus? Did you binge it yet? Yeah, I'm on the second episode. I, I mean, I'm loving the first season still so much. So it's, it's really hard to adjust. Yes. Yeah. I don't know what I'm binging. I just re-binged, um, is it little, what is the one with Nicole Kidman and Reese Witherspoon and Zoe Kravitz, Big Little Lies? Yes. I re-watched that one. I it's, loved Billions. Oh, great. I love that movie, that show and Billions. I haven't watched that one. You haven't watched any Billions? Oh. Wait, am I thinking of, Billions I like, but I'm actually thinking of Succession when I say Billions, but I love oh. Billions also. I'm Succession? Also I die. Right. So entertaining. When is it coming back? Coming back, right? Soon, soon. Yeah. Cadence. To... Cadence, this is for you. I'll sign you for you. Not too many more. Kristen. What do you guys think about, um, write in the comments, what do you guys think about doing online signings versus meeting in person? Do you like it? Maya, how do you go about starting a foundation? Uh, you need a good lawyer and just let them hopefully find one pro bono like we did and uh, just let them fill out all the paperwork and then you need to form a board of advisors and then also if you're doing something within the medical community um, a hospital advisory board is also really helpful so doctors that sit on your board and can you know walk you through things medically that i have not the knowledge of they're much more equipped how did you get that uh i don't even know i think it was through i just had woody probably Woody, because he's an attorney and new attorneys. So he was really the one on the back end kind of handling all of that stuff while I was the caretaker of Ronan, but he's the one that I feel like started up the whole foundation. The whole thing. I want to meet you in person so bad. Love the whole cast of Angel. Oh, it went by too fast. I, I want to meet you too. Um, is Angel really, oh gosh, it went too fast. Something about prosthetic. Um, I don't know. It's waving to people. Did you see any of your friends on here? Do we have anybody that was involved with the Ronan Thompson Foundation come up? Macy or Fernanda? I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen anybody yet. I haven't seen anybody yet either, but I'm looking down a lot. I'm going okay. to read a question to you. What current show do you want to be on? Oh my gosh. I would have liked to have been on Gotham Nights with Misha Collins. I auditioned for that, but I don't think I got it. Um, that would have been cool. Um, Greg Berlanti is like a phenomenal um, producer. It would have been cool to be on that. I would love to have been on Wolfpack. Um, Sarah and I kind of re-teaming together in that genre would be super fun, I think. I mean, White Lotus, Succession. Um, I mean, I'm so obsessed with all these great shows right now. Do you guys, what shows do you see me fitting in on? I mean, let me know. I mean, I wanna play, I want. I like staying in genre specific things just because it's just so in my wheelhouse, it feels natural, but like, oh, my ultimate, I can't believe I missed this. The Boys, The Boys is my ultimate, ultimate show. I would love to be on The, boy, the Boys with, um, on, on Amazon. 
I mean, Holander is like the best. Um, Anthony, I can't think of his last name right now, is like one of the best actors I've ever seen in, in movie or television ever. He's so good. He can go from, have you ever watched it? The Voice? It's highly entertaining. Okay. So it's Meg Ryan and, um, and Dennis Quaid's son is in it and um, Kyle so-and-so and then the guy that plays Homelander. I'm forgetting all their names at this moment, but I'm huge fans of the show. I've seen every freaking episode. It's amazing. I would love to be a part of that show. Um, Eric Kripke, Kripke is like the creator. Um, Seth Rogen's a creator. So it's whip it smart. There's like jokes every two or three minutes. It makes fun of itself. I mean, it's kind of gross and it's very bloody. And then, you know, it's just, it's everything. It's everything, right? It, it's the genre that I would like most want to be a part of. Okay, I'm done talking about that. Get her on the voice. I love that. Yes, please get me on the voice. Fans unite and start a campaign. Get me on the voice. I auditioned for all things the voice. Like I auditioned for the spinoff of, of Supernatural that's coming out as the mom and I didn't get it. I feel like I keep, they keep bringing me back for the boys and keep bringing me back on things that are like supernatural related, but I don't end up getting on it. So I know I'm on their radar. I just don't think we found the right fit yet, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful it'll work out. Dave, I just finished your photo. I only have a few left to do like four more. So get your questions in before we end. Somebody asked how they can get a signed photo. Oh, Go to stream like right now. Go to yeah. Streamly. It said, "How can I get one?" Oh, Streamly. Um, dot com slash charisma. Go to my store right now, and you can order one, and they'll send it to me, and I can sign it. But um, more news on that later. I'll be making an announcement on that later. Pay attention to your email. Sign up for mycon dot live, and I can give you more information about that. But today is about Streamly. And the Ryan Thompson Foundation. Somebody said, bring the lying game back. <laughs> bring it back. I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening, but it was fun. What's your favorite scene in Buffy? My favorite scene in Buffy. Um, anything from the homecoming episode was super fun. Um, I love the, uh, I saw on a, um, some, a fan sent me a DM showing me um, a, uh, a, an awkward kiss with Wesley that I forgot about. I need to do a rewatch of this show. You guys would, should I do a po uh, podcast and do a rewatch of Buffy? Just me watching it like, and I can give you all the like behind the scenes, like, oh my God, I remember this day. And I couldn't get my lines out right. And I was super stressed out. Or like, today was the day that Xander and I had a bad breath contest. And I won because I had lox and bagels with onions and capers. And I'm the best at being evil. Um, you know, is that something that you guys would want to do? Oh, my God, yes. Really? Oh, my God, I'm getting a resounding yes. And Angel, too. Well, I don't, I think David's busy. But I would love to have him on if he would come. But I don't know. That's something. That would have to be worked out. Um, all right, let me see. I only have four more left. I don't know how to pronounce this name. Is it Betty? B E A T E? I don't know. What do you think? Or beat? Somebody asked an angel, did they write the real pregnancy into the show or was it a prosthetic? Uh, what was the question? Did Angel, did they write your real pregnancy into the show or was it a prosthetic? No, I was really pregnant. And it was, you guys got to do your research on that one. How far are you? Like really pregnant? Really, really pregnant? How many months? Oh, I was on the show. I worked till five days before I gave birth. Oh, wow. Yeah. And this is the last one. It's the poster, the specialized poster that we did for Streamly. It's exclusive to Streamly only. And this one goes out to Michael McGee. And now all of the photos for VIP.
have been signed. I want to thank you so much for paying attention and participating and allowing us to talk to you about the Ryan Thompson Foundation. Thank you for all your donations, 20 donations, almost $500. I wonder if, if anybody could donate and get us to break 500. That would be amazing. Um, if we can get some more auditions. Love you, Maya. Who is Connie Gorley? Do you know Connie Gorley? That's my sister, the best sister on the planet. Hi, Connie. Oh. She's the best. Uh, thanks for your request to join. I can't allow you to join because it's just me and Maya. Um, uh, is anybody able to donate just how much more do we need? $25 will bring us up to 500. We're at 475 right now. Yeah. Yep. I'm sorry. I missed this slide. Well, we're still here. We're still here. We're hanging in. If we anybody can top us off and get us to 500, that would be amazing. And just so you know, to remind you that you guys, by participating in this Streamly and ordering these photos, are going to help the Ronan Thompson Foundation get 100% of the donations, and it'll be completely dedicated to research and helping families. Not one dime goes towards staff or any kind of board fees. They have a tremendous board there and it's tax deductible and you're the best. Let's see. Can you donate British money? Can you? I'm sure you can donate British money. Yeah. Yes, that would be amazing. I love, I love British we money. We love any kind of money from any denomination. Yeah. Um, yeah, so if we can top off to 500, that would be amazing, you guys. Someone needs to write her her own show, plain and simple. She needs yeah. to be a leading role. Yes, 100%, and a comedy. Um, yeah, yeah. Or I'll settle for the voice. I think people know that about you, how clever and funny you are. Aw. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah. people need to know this information. <laughs> well, it's really helpful when um, others write it for me. You know, that's yeah. sweet. Um, so happy to donate and also add my Buffy collection. Thank you for doing this. Oh, thank you so much. Darren Mulholland, ha ha ha, money, money, money all the way. Sending love from France, you are funny. Darren, are you gonna donate? Um, Angel spinoff of Cordy, I think that's, that is passed. Thank you, Abigail, for donating. CJ and Date is one of my favorite comfort movies. So yes, put her in a comedy. I love CJ and Date. That was a really fun ex oh, We're topped off. We oh my gosh, we're at 525? You guys are the best. Oh my gosh. The best fans. My fan name is charisma for a reason. It's to help make people give money to Ronan. <laughs> um wait, somebody donated five hundred dollars? Or no. Wait. Wait, no, maybe she's just saying we arrived okay. at five. Now we're at 525. Now I don't want to be greedy, but oh my gosh, okay. you guys. We have to stay on. Should we stay on and get to a thousand? Maybe. Oh my gosh, I don't know. A spinoff of, does anybody want to chime in and match the 525 and take us to a thousand? A spinoff of Cordy oh. as a higher being. Oh my God, it's Charisma Carpenter. I love her. She was hilarious, Cordy from Buffy, and she needs to bring bring that show back and you're absolutely gorgeous thank you two hundred dollars oh oh my gosh wait so did you did Darius. you Darius? did you send two hundred dollars oh charisma i love you and your story touched me about the joss thing so thank you oh i'm happy that you felt touched by that um <laughs> Darius, did you donate two hundred dollars because it's not reflected or maybe you did it already but thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I don't know how delayed these comments are. Amazing. Let me see. Woohoo. Donate. Thank you, Adam. We're at 500. We're at 525. Does anybody want to match the 525? Let me know. Because I'm just here to make the money for Ronan Thompson Foundation. I will do and say whatever I need to to make you guys understand how important this foundation is to helping save lives. All right, girl, I think we should go. But if you guys if Thank you guys want to continue to donate, it's, I think it stays alive. 
I, yeah. if I put this on my thing, you can still donate. So if anybody wants to match the 525 and take us to a thousand, that would be like the most exciting hour of our day. So um, <laughs> thank you for everything, Maya. Thank you for joining and sharing your story. Thank you, Please. Taylor, for putting Thanks. her love of Ronan forward and into the world as well and embracing the, the foundation too. I'm a major Swifty because of you now and Midnight's yeah. Rules. I'm obsessed with the whole album. And I know I'm 52, but I'm obsessed with Taylor Swift also. What are you going to do? No Young at heart. There's no age limit. No, at all. Thank no. you. That's Thank us. you, guys. Love you. Bye, my. Bye. Bye. And cancel. And I guess I just turn it off. I don't want to say goodbye. Are you sure you want to end the video?